this house is a home. For somebody who first visits, it may look like a stately home, a show home, but in actual fact, it's a real home. It's been a, a huge um, labour of love, really, because the, the home is so old and such a lot of restoration to be done. So there's a huge amount of our personalities and characters in the home. John Cordwell started life with nothing, but became one of the UK's best-known entrepreneurs. Over a decade ago, his success enabled him and his family to move here to their dream home in rural Staffordshire. So how was school? Is it OK? The 1st of November last year had been like any other day. Claire and the family's au pair, Sophie, had done the school run and returned to the house. You got your teddy? At around 7pm, Sophie put the couple's son to bed and went to her room. We were just settling down after supper. I was flicking through a magazine, nothing in particular, when they burst in on us. The way they attacked so quickly gave us no speed of reaction at all. Uh, I saw the second man with the crowbar. I went to grab the crowbar and he just smashed it down on my head. No! My head was just ringing, I could see stars. I was sort of on the point of semi-consciousness, but still OK. Get on the floor! Get on the floor! Oh, God! Get down! There's just blood everywhere. I mean, I'm not medical. I don't know how much blood you can lose from the head before it's dangerous. So I was pretty frantic, hysterical, um, thinking, how long is this going to last for? And, you know, John needs medical attention, you know, as soon as possible. I said, calm down. Don't the gang me. then began to question Claire about who else was in the house, forcing her to reveal that the au pair Sophie was upstairs in her room. Hey, come on, you call it on. Ah, it's all right, it's okay, it's all right. No one's gonna get here, it's okay. But the family's nightmare was only just beginning. With John and the au pair handcuffed in the kitchen, the armed attackers would now force Claire to open the family safe. Don't mess us about. I'm not, I'm not. Come I'll show on, you now. OK. Right, oh. just put the number in. Uh, open the safe. Uh, just open I the safe. I can't, Come remember on, the, quick. I can't remember the number. I couldn't think of the number to, to begin with. I was so nervous, I was shaking. I was confused, I was, you know, worried about what, what they were going to do next. Stop messing oh. us about and open it! I did, did the combination and opened the safe and they emptied all of what they saw. There was cash, there was jewellery. They said, now take us to the other safe. And I said, there isn't another safe. And they got, he got more threatening and louder. And he said, take us to the safe. And he threatened me and my son. Your son's in bed upstairs, isn't he? Yes. I know there's another safe. Don't mess me about. But I'll pay him a visit. Claire was so petrified of what they'd do to her son, she felt she had to admit that there was a second safe. What's the number to the safe? <laughs> Come on, let's make it quick. Come on. Okay. Don't mess us about it. anymore. What's the number to the safe? We didn't want them getting out of the house quickly because we had managed to set off an alarm. So all the time we were hoping that the police would arrive. Stop messing us about what's the number! The balance that was going on in my mind was how much can I delay them without uh, bringing serious injury to Claire or the other people in the house, which was my son and, uh, and the au pair. So I did eventually give them the number. And at this time, they were obviously successful. They got in the safe, took everything. Stay there. And then one guy said to the other, blue lights, blue lights. So they went to run. Right, OK. And one of them said, bring her with you. So he went to grab me. I fortunately managed to wriggle free. And obviously they were then at the point where they just got to run. So he didn't stop to come back for me. 
and we've got another stairway in the house, so I ran down the back stairway and hid in a bedroom. John Clare watched from the window as the gang escaped. At that point, there must have been tremendous relief that you'd, you'd actually survived. There was. There was a huge relief of survival. But of course, I was still worried about Claire. I didn't know what had happened to her. As soon as I found out that Claire was OK, then it gave way to frustration and anger. Yeah, because the, the police actually know that they were on the property itself, they were watching, they were planning, they were just working out the whole layout, weren't they? Yeah, that could have been happening for days or months. We just don't know. What we do know from the amount of information that the crooks had was that there was serious surveillance had been taking place of our lives. And, f and what does that feel like? <laughs> I mean, it's a dreadful thought because it just means anybody can watch you at any time. Nothing will be the same again the fact that I'll never replace the sentimental items, but also, you know, being free and easy in a home um, where, you know, where, where once we didn't have to have any security other than, you know, normal alarm systems. And now, you know, I don't feel safe alone in the house. And they're probably going to almost certainly do it again. And who knows what's going to happen next time. Next time, it might be some, somebody who is, who is killed.